character in Yamtuber during the story using hyperspectral imaging. This work is carried out by the contributions uh, of uh, Fabrice Davrieux, Léa Ollier, Julien Ricci, Christian Mestre, et jo and Joel Grabulos from CIRAD. To do this work, young tubers from three origins, Ghana, France, and Brazil, were used and then stored in climatic chamber, like this one, at 16 degrees Celsius and 71% uh, of relative humidity, and then hyperspectral and dry matter measurement are carried at, out at zero, um, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75 days of story. Each tuber is uh, pilot, uh, cleaned and divided into six uh, slices with the same size, two proximal, two central and two distal. Each for each slices, two hyperspectral images were acquired, and then for each image, mean spectra is calculated. For the dry matter measurement, we calculate one value of for each slice, uh, making a total of 96 value of dry matter from zero to 75 days of storage and then 96 per 2 image making a total of 192 mean spectra and dry matter value. For the acquisition and treatment of hyperspectral images, uh, the image acquisition in reflectance mode from 932 to 1721 nanometers and then selection of region of interest by creating a binary mask and then application of max mask this mask and miss this mask and then folding of 3d image into 2d ma spectrum matrix the unfolding is done by this way. In image cube, we have X uh, special dimensions X, Y, and spectral dimensions Z, which is the number of wavelength. In this image, each plane is the image acquired in one wavelength, and each pixel is one spectra. And uh, each plane of uh, this image cube is unfolded into one column of the matrix and uh, in the filing we obtain the matrix with z columns uh, z columns which is the number of wavelength and x y uh, per y uh, rows which is the number of pixels and uh, when this matrix is calculated we can calculate the you know, mean spectra and applicate chemometrics methods. The first thing that we did, we apply principal component analysis on the all mean spectra, 1192 spectra. Here we have a score plot PC1, PC2, colored by origin as you can see in uh, from this this uh, plot we can differentiate three groups of samples according to their origin Ghana France and uh, France in red and Brazil we here we have the same score plot but colored by storage days as we can see we, we can we, we see not, no distinction, no, no di <coughs> differentiation between uh, samples from different storage days.
to avoid the, the origin effect, here we have uh, we apply a PCA on spectra of Ghana samples only. Here we have a score plot of PC1, PC2 color by storage day. From this uh, uh, plot, we can see that the samples are grouped by per storage days. And here from loading plot of the first axis, PC1, we see that the uh, positive, uh, positive uh, bands characteristics of water and negative bands characteristic of starch. That is mean that prime matter content increases from the positive part uh, to the negative part. Uh, dry matter content increases during the storage from 0 to the 60 days of the storage. Here we have a result from dry matter values content kinetic during the storage. As you can see in this histogram plot that Ghana in blue, uh, dry matter, is higher than dry matter uh, of uh, Brazil in, in, in grey. And thus dry matter are higher than uh, of dry matter of France in orange. We can see also that dry matter uh, content for all origins uh, increases from 0 to 45 days and decrease at 60 days and increase again at 75 days. We, in this work, we will use uh, uh, the samples from 0 to 45 days uh, for the calibration set and the samples for 60 to 75 uh, days for the validation set. For the development of calibration, we used partial square regression on uh, 132 spectra from 0 to uh, 45 days. Uh, here we have a reference, uh, a reference dry matter versus dry matter predicted by by NIRS uh, by NIRS plot. This model is developed by the Savisky uh, Golay first derivative and SMB with three latent variables. Root mean square error of calibration is 2.79. R square of calibration is 0 0.90. Root mean square error of cross validation is 2.85. And uh, R square of cross validation is 0 0.89. From the, these results, we can consider that uh, that uh, hyperspectral imaging could be used to, for the quantification of dry matter on, uh, in YAM tuber with the good uh, performances. After the development of the model, we project of, uh, of uh, project high perspectral images on the PLS model. You here we have the you have the predicted images of central slices at zero days for the three origins: Ghana, France, and Brazil. The color scales go from the dark uh, blue with the low lower. Uh, content of uh, dry matter to the dark red with the higher content of dry matter. As, as we can, you can see in this image of, of Ghana that we can uh, uh, predict 
quantify dry matter pixel by pixel and the dry matter is higher in the edge than the than the center of a slice uh, the same observation for uh, France and Brazil. We see also that in Ghana we have uh, more red with with higher content of dry matter and in France we have more blue with lower content of dry matter. Dry matter. The, uh, this confirms what we, we see in uh, dry matter uh, value from laboratory. Here we have predicted image of proximal, central and distal slices of Ghana at zero days. As we can see for proximal, you, we have more red than central and distal. That is mean that we have higher content of dry matter. And in the distal we have more blue. That is mean we have lower content of dry matter. The, the dry matter content decreases from the proximal to the distal um, side in the tuber. We have the, the you have here we have the predicted images on distal slices of Ghana during the storage from uh, 0 to 60 days of the storage. We can see here the evolution of uh, dry matter from the edge to the center of, um, of uh, the slices. We, we see also that uh, dry matter increase with, uh, uh, with the storage day, days with the higher content at uh, 60 days of the storage. Here we have here we have the projection of uh, 60 spectrophorization set on the Piliades Morel from 60 to 75 days. Here we have the, the this plot of present projection of validation set in score PC1 PC2 of calibration set. From this plot, you can see that spectral variation validation set in green is a representative of calibration set in blue. Um, <coughs> in blue, here we have the correlation uh, between a reference uh, value and nearest predicted values from 4GM plot. From this plot, we can see that the performance of model decreases in validation with the R square equal to 0 0.80 and the root mean square error of prediction equal to 3.88 percent. This this is it could it could be due to for low precision of laboratory value. Dry matter measurement because dry matter measurement are carried out by freeze dried on wool slices, not on small small slices. Thanks to this work, we proved that hyperspectral imaging could be used to predict and visualize dry matter content of fresh MUAM tuber with the promise, promises performance uh, with the R square equal to 0 0.89 and uh, error of cross validation of 2.85 percent. And HSI could be used also to follow the evolution of dry matter content during the storage and, uh, and the visualization of special distribution of dry matter content in the tuber. Uh, for the next step, we will use the same samples to develop calibration model for pectins, starch, temperature of gelatinization of starch and emulose.
Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Karima. Thanks a lot for presenting this very first proof of concept in RTB Foods framework, evidencing that hyperspectral imaging can indeed be used to quantify, or let's say to predict, the content and the spatial distribution of a critical component such as dry matter. But of course, dry matter is just the first, a first step. And we are looking forward for some more applications in the coming period to other crops, but also uh, to other biochemical parameters. Um, so I'm now asking um, if anybody has a question for Karima. Raise your hand or there are questions in the chat box. Dominique is asking, uh, why uh, have you not used longitudinal slices? Yes, uh, of course we can uh, we can um, uh, apply uh, we, uh, measure on uh, longitudinal slices. Yes, Dominique, is there something you you would like to to ask more as a complement, maybe? Is to avoid uh, many manipulation if you have yes, the, just the uh, slice, cut in two six, slides. You don't need six cuts. You need only yeah. one. This uh, but, uh, here we we did the proof of concept and for the future um, analysis we can avoid the uh, steps for uh, uh, prepare uh, cut in six um, in six slices we will uh, just cut in two slices on line slices okay. yes Okay, there's, there's a question from Michael in the chat box. Is the rise in dry matter content with storage due to a simple loss of water? Yes, it's due to of, uh, loss of water, yes. Yeah. Um, and we see that in the several uh, publications uh, on uh, well, the following dry matter during the storage. Yeah, we see that. Uh, during the storage, um, tubers lost uh, their uh, water. Thank you. Emmanuel, you are raising your hand. Yes, thank you, Eglanta. Thank you, Karima, for a good um, presentation, insight, insightful, insightful one. Um, my question is, we know yams, the way they are big, your slice, you did not give us the 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 dimension of the, your slice because yeah, dimension. The, because I, I because the penetration depth of of the hsi is one to two mm yes. how can we capture, yeah how can we capture if the yam is big how can we capture we, all the, with, uh, yeah with uh, hyperspectral imaging and uh, with also nears we can uh, see also um, only in the surface, not in the in, inside the samples. Yeah, we, we can quantify dry matter in, um, in the surface of dry matter uh, of uh, of the slice, but not inside. We can't, uh, and the size of slices are uh, uh, six centimeter of dry uh, diameter and two centimeter of uh, thickness. Yeah, thank you very much. That that that's my concern. That means that one calls for a good um, design of you know getting the sample to capture the real distribution of the dry matter and yeah. distribution of other parameters. So we need to 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 design a good um, um, sample the way we want to put the sample to be able to capture the feature. With the yeah. mind that the penetration okay. level of the HSI is one to two mm. Yeah, one to I mean is right. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, hyperspectra is like uh, near so We can we can see uh, inside the uh, inside the samples for the intact samples. You know. Yeah. Okay. 
Fabrice, uh, do you want to react or is it a question for Karima? No, just uh, yes, uh, just uh, to complete uh, Emmanuel, it's very important what uh, Emmanuel says and what uh, Karima uh, said, said as also. Uh, that's why the next step will be to to be sure once we uh, we will have a calibration. Uh, it doesn't matter if the calibration is done only on one side or the other side. What we need is a calibration. So we need to be able to predict every uh, individual pixel. Once we will have this, we can do a lot of experiment to see the best way to see the spatial distribution uh, within the, the, tub the tuber. So th the first step should be to, to set up a reliable uh, calibration. Once we have this, we can predict any kind of pixel coming from the tuber. So we can try every different way to, to measure the, to take the images of, uh, of the tuber. Yes. Is it OK, Emmanuel? I suppose it is. Mm. There were yes, it's okay. We still discuss more within the group. This okay. um because the proof of concept we still need to to to, to perfect things. Yeah, thank you. But Good. what um what um Karima said and um and Fabrice yes is uh, we is addressing the issue that um, once with the calibration is development then we can look at we are the best to capture the best image to give us the the true um accurate uh, values of the parameters we are measuring thank you thank you uh, there's a question from akim can storage conditions such as temperature and uh, relative mm -hmm. humidity affect the dry matter of the st stored tubers and what are the conditions of uh, of storage of your tubers Yes, uh, yes, uh, the temperature and the uh, RH uh, affect uh, the dry matter uh, uh, stored of uh, stored tubers. And uh, uh, for our conditions, uh, we, see, we see the, in some publications, publications that the, the optimum conditions is uh, 16 degrees Celsius and uh, uh, um, 71% of uh, RH. Yes, this is our uh, conditions. Thank you. Michael, do you want to ask your question to Karima? Yes, thank you, Eglatan. Karima, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I just wanted to, I, my, my question is uh, following up with what uh, uh, Dr. Alamu mentioned. Um, now I, the, I I I read some uh, literature where uh, a, a, a spectra was used to mm -hmm. to can you hear me to predict uh, roughly in potato without cutting. So you you mentioned a statement that is not able to penetrate into the into the roots or the tuber. Uh, then how was it possible for 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 the for hyperspectra to predict the rotling in potatoes? So I, I saw so many work being done related to that. Then secondly, uh, I think if uh, since the penetration distance is about two mm into the root, I, I think uh, I support the idea to 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 develop a, a protocol to to. Uh, reduce the sample size to a uniform dimension that is able to allow the penetration of, 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 of the camera. Thank you. Yes. Uh, for your question about um, the, I don't understand what is the role on the, what is that? The con I was referring to rotling. 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 What uh, is rotling? Yes, rotling in potatoes. I've ah. seen so many work where hyperspectra was used to predict. Yes. They were actually used to 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 discriminate good and bad potatoes. Ah. Yeah, without for frying. Uh, yes, without, without cutting. Yes, without cutting. Yes. Yes, from the whole potato. Yes, from the whole potato. Because, because in fact. 
sometimes if uh, on, on in some case we can predict the information inside inside the inside the, the samples uh, from the information uh, in the surface in the outside because in some case uh, for example for the effect when we uh, pre um, when we want to detect the effect in a potato or, or uh, other tubers we we can uh, see the the effect inside the in the outside because the effect se, um, se propage uh, to this is that is an I game. I don't I, I don't. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a Karima. It's indirect correlation. It's a yeah, similar indirect. what we oh, observe yeah, in. Uh, it's similar to what we can observe with an air. Sometimes we are doing something inside the fruit or inside mm -hmm. the tuber, because it's indirect correlation to something else. Uh, that's yes. uh, the way it works. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Know. Now, I mean, Michael, in addition to that, the matrix of potato is, um, and when you talk about the opacity, is not as strong when you compare with other tubers. It looks more translucent than when yeah. you compare it with, uh, with uh, other, other tubers like cassava and uh, yam. The matrix yeah. is quite different, yes. Yeah, so see, the, that yam yeah. is the same. So, uh... Yeah. Like uh, like uh, to potato uh, for a cassava, yes, it's uh, compact, more compact, but uh, more compact than so yeah. that is what makes HSI to be more, more able to to right. to get more information yeah. in potato without cutting. And then when you look at the skin as well, the the skin of each one of them are quite different. If you look at the nature of cassava, you have the cortex, which is very mm. hard. Yeah. Then in yam too, you have this the, the thick skin outside. So it's different from potato, which is very light. And yes, then the, yes, the skin is very, uh, very thin. Light. So and we so can it. see, uh, yeah, yeah, grow yeah. The, the skin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Edwin. Any relationship or let's say linkages between hyperspectral imaging? and DGI imaging. DGI imaging, I don't um, uh, know this, uh, this uh, technique, this uh, DGI uh, images. Uh, this is a new technique for the... Fabrice? Yes, it's a very good question. It's complementary. So, uh, mm -hmm. of course, we, we do have similar information and uh, uh, not obligatory in the same wavelengths and same uh, things. So, it, it could be used together and it, it's a it's complementary uh, approach. Huh? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, a question from Xiaofei, does latex or the water movement after cutting the roots affect the measurement of dry matter? Uh, maybe, maybe, huh? uh, yeah, because with the, the, when we cut, uh, the water will move, move from the, the uh, enduring, uh, enduring uh, surface, right? May, yes. Yes, okay. I think yes. Um, so, uh, do you have a kind of time? How, how many minutes after you after you cut, you measure the dry matter, or is? Yes, we know? cut. Uh, we cut. We and the, directly we put. Uh, we take uh, images, hyperspectral images, and the, after that we we um, we measure dry matter after. Uh, Three minutes, three minutes, or four minutes after the cutting. Yeah, so I read this, this question mainly based on our experience in Kasawa on um, yeah. using the, the quality spec. So theory noticed that after we cut the, the roots, the surface, there, there are some water 
water yeah. move. Yes, we there. have surf when well, more water in the surface when we cut. Yes. Yeah. We observe that in uh, Yam also. So do you think do you think we do you think we need we need to test uh, when uh, is I mean how many minutes after cutting is 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 uh, the good time to measure the dry matter? Yes, we can, we will uh, we use this is we can uh, do this test for uh, to determine the number of yeah. how many minutes to the optimum time for the got it Thank for you. the with the measurement. Yes, this is uh, right. Interesting. And there's Jerry mentioning in the chat box that we do see changes in the near spectra depending on time after cutting. Emmanuel, you want to add something to this? Yes, and um, I, I think um, we discussed it. I think Fabrice also will raise it. I think as um, Terry that raised it sometimes in one of the meetings. That's why we said we need to, once it is cut, when you are using the intact route, you have to take the, you have to take the spectral collection immediately. So mm. it's the same thing with HSI. So mm. once it is cut, you need to take the picture. Yeah, yeah. you need to so take the picture with, di directly. Yeah. yeah, shouldn't wait mm. any long, too long. Yeah. Mm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a problem, but it's a problem that it can be taken care of. And once we standardize a protocol, that is the timing of taking the picture, it, it, the, the effect will be, um, it, it's going to be a spread effect on all the samples that you are measuring. So, because that is why the protocol is going to be developed that once it is caught within so, so, so seconds or a minute, then you have to read. Yeah. Yeah. Fabrice, you wanted to say something on this? Uh, a question, <clears throat> just a question as we are still talking about uh, the time after cutting. How long it, it took for, uh, for one, one image, Karima? How, how long? To how it, long? How long? Is it, it is long to do to acquire uh, uh, one no, image? No, no, just, uh, just uh, 20 seconds for the acquisition. Oh, perfect. It's very, it's very fast. It's, yeah, with, with, yes, it's very fast. It's, that's why you said when it is caught, yeah. yes, you just take the picture. So it's yeah. the same thing with the spectral reading also, if when you are using the intact route. Once it is caught, because once it's, you injure this, the cells, the uh, extradition of water, the water a little bit come to the surface. But yeah. that one also is correlated to the motion, I mean, motion content of the material we are using. And that is what we observe from the um, cassava from the Latin America, from the cassava from our region here. So, so the water content is quite different due to the dry matter variation. So, so definitely there are some that it will not, the water will not extrude as much as the, in the other ones. Yes. Thank you. Uh, while we are addressing this topic, I would like to go to another question from, from Akim. What are the critical control points observed during the experiment, apart from taking the picture immediately after cutting? Uh, we have not uh, another uh, critical is um, lamp, uh, because uh, we have temperature of uh, the uh, lamp increase in the increase uh, because the camera is equipped with the lamp uh, halogen lamp and this uh, halogen lamp uh, is um, um, temperature increase with this and we this is the critical also uh, criteria to control Okay, thank you. There's a question from Michael to link your experiment with consumer preferences. When people prepare pounded yam, do they use the whole tuber or do they prefer to take the proximal or distal parts? Is there something related to the spatial distribution that is related to the way the product is prepared? Maybe you answer, Bolonle is there as well to answer. But maybe Karima, if you have. Uh, <laughs> I let Bologna to answer. I'm not a specialist for that. <laughs> Bologna, are you with us? Yeah. 
Yeah, and good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much um, for the presentation. Very, very, very interesting. Well, when people want to prepare pandemia, really they come to the proximal and the distal end. So I agree with the question that could there be, can there be a spectral camera for a difference? The reason is this. Most of the time, especially in fresh yam tubers, like you were mentioning zero to 45 day story, we still regard that as fresh yam tubers. Once you have not stored them for more than three months, we still regard them as fresh yam tubers. So when you use it to pound yam, the, the pounded yam usually have lumps. So people don't want it. So they cut off the proximal, they cut off the distal end. They use just the middle. So in line with, with the question that the person asked, the hyperspectra actually show anything there? Is it a matter of the GM? Is it the matter of the start granules? Those that start granules, Different from the start granule sizes, Di they differ. Yes. Uh, from this work, we see that uh, we, there are differences between uh, proximal and distal part in the tuber. We see that in uh, proximal, we have higher content of dry matter that uh, I um, shows in the presentation. And in the distal, we have lower content uh, of dry matter. So yes, we can differentiate uh, uh, between uh, proximal and distal zone uh, by using hyperspectral imaging. Yeah. Of uh, about dry matter, yes. Good, thank you to the two of you. Um, a question from Lucienne. Why do you select uh, zero to 45 days of storage for calibration? What impact on the performance of prediction model? Um, um, Fabrice answered in this way. I'm sorry, please, ahead. So people don't use the proximal and distal in yeah. Okay. Hello? Y yes. Hello? Yes. We can okay. hear you. So I, I don't know where the network went off. I was just saying that in pounded yam, if you use the proximal and the distal end to pound the yam, it will be lumpy. So can the hyperspectral image show the difference in the dry matter? Can it show a difference in the dry matter distribution? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get something from maybe the dry matter distribution in the middle portion, which people actually use for the pounded yam and between the this talent is proximate. Thank you. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, Bolanli. Um, Karima, so Karima said that, that, that yes, a hyperspectral camera um, shows that there, there are differences between the central part and the distal and proximal sections. So there are differences and they can be seen through hyperspectral. Okay, that's very good. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Karima, can you answer the, uh, Lucien's questions regarding? Yes, uh, because um, uh, Fabrice answered in this uh, in the chart. Oh. Yes, I can. For, I, 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 I can panel. complete. I can mm. complete if you want. Yeah. Okay. To answer to Lucien. Yes, Lucien, it's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> we choose to do to do this to be able to have some kind of independent sample because they are not in the uh, they are not in the same uh, time of storage like the other one just to have an idea an idea of uh, uh, the ability to predict of our calibrations we did also other uh, validation we took uh, one one uh, slice and we predict the other one for example <clears throat> we use also only uh, Ghana and uh, 
uh, remember Ghana and Brazil, and to predict uh, uh, sample from France and things like this. All the prediction were uh, close together, so it means that we do have uh, something robust in terms of uh, uh, representativity of the of the, of the spectra and uh, reliable in terms of uh, accuracy of the prediction because the standard error of prediction was was similar, were similar. Uh, any kind of validation we have done, just the validation in this way was just to be sure that we have a, a kind of independent sample to do the, the validation. Thanks, Alice. Thank you, Fabrice. Is there any other question? Uh, there's a question from Michael, but it may be more general than addressed to Karima specifically. Um, it, perhaps something from starch granule properties, maybe pectin content can be uh, linked to this uh, lumpiness. Um, is there somebody who wants to react mm -hmm. on this? I've mentioned it well in the chat. Yes. I mentioned something like that, that it's, it could be the starch granules. Oh, it, the connection is breaking from your side, Bologna. The, the, no, it, the clinic mentioned. See, no, I'll put it in the chat. You can check the chat where I said it. Good. The chemical composition varies along the grid. So it could be so many things. It could be as a result of so many things. It could be as a result of such granule size that can actually affect maybe the viscosity or the 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 the, the it could be granule size, it could be chemical composition, it could be the non-starch carbohydrate composition, it could be other parietal components of the can you hear me? Yes, we can. It's Thank breaking you. a bit, but we can. Thank you. Uh, Fabrice is asking what a lumpiness is. But Dominic answered okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> when there are a lot of lumps in the pandemia, it's supposed to be smooth. It's supposed yes, to be a smooth. Yes, so, so yeah. be careful. Be careful. If you are trying to interpret images you have seen in the Karima, it's fake images. Eh? Images. Eh? It's not real images. It's prediction. Of, uh, this. So, uh, the uh, the aspect of the image is not the reality. Eh? So. That's why I ask for lumpiness. So the uh, uh, the aspect of the image is not the reality. It's uh, fake images. So uh, just prediction according to water and prediction and first, pixel uh, by pixel and false color. False uh, color. color. So color be careful of interpretation of the image in terms of uh, aspect of the image. Eh? Yes, hard, uh, hard, hard uh, red is uh, higher. Uh, Present higher content of dry matter because here we we uh, project the image in the model TLS model for the prediction of dry matter. So we see the dry matter higher red is a higher content of uh, dry matter and uh, hard uh, blue is a higher uh, content uh, lower content of dry matter. Any other comment? Question for Karima and team. No more questions. Okay, so I think uh, um, it's time to conclude. Thanks a lot, Karima. Thanks, Fabrice, and all colleagues from Work Package 2 at CIRAD Montpellier for this presentation. So we are looking forward to the calibration now and uh, looking forward to more applications on, uh, on other crops and uh, on other biochemical components.